we're going to continue looking at these functions of several variables and we're just kind of re-asking questions that we would have seen maybe before we ever got to calculus. So one of those questions is can you talk about the domain and range of a function? You know so what what domain and range represent um, are basically we have our input and we have our output we cannot call them just x and y anymore because we know that this particular function here really means that z equals 2 and we're about to see a list of functions that would be familiar to you if you had watched my last segment on on sketching the graphs you don't need to have seen them but I did some uh, repetition on purpose so let's just look at this uh, really quickly here of our domain and we'll have our range and you know this is one of those cases where the range is really simple I mean it's it's one number it's two and it's two only there's never any different output it would be sort of like everyone goes outside in the same place and somebody asks one person the question what's the temperature and they give the answer and then they go to the next person and ask what's the temperature and everybody gives the same answer because it's the same temperature for everybody that's there so domain if you were to write down all reals because your algebra brain says there's no strange algebra here z equals 2 you can put anything in you want the answer to this is no you cannot call this domain all reals because all reals is short for yeah, let's put it over here off to the side the R symbol that sometimes is used is short for the real numbers and you need to know we did not plug numbers into this function we plugged in the coordinates of a point we plugged in two numbers an X value and a Y value and then combined we got an answer I gave my name I gave the day of the week and I got oh I'm working only two hours a day that's a really short work shift this domain we need to say as informally all XY so this would be informal just like that's informal if you wanted to get more formal you could say something like the domain is the set of all X and Y values such that X is real and Y is real this would be more formal I do accept this in these early phases of uh, the class right now because my first objective is that you can effectively communicate it to somebody else but then ultimately you need to be able to read the set notation and not panic some of the problems will not have domains that are all possible X and Y values so those will be more interesting and for the range I guess we could say um, uh, Z equals 2 is the range where the range is 2 or we could say the set of all z values such that z equals 2 that's basically saying z equals 2 so there's your first example now domain and range domain and range again well I think we could 
make an argument that the domain here that you can use all x, y pairs that you want to. x could be positive and x could be negative. You know, we could have, you know, 3 comma something and negative 4 comma something. y could be 0 and y could be negative pi. This is not a problem. You can use any x and y pairs that you want. So my follow-up question is, well, what about the range? If this is the domain, what kind of outputs, what does it look like if z equals x squared plus y squared? Well, when I teach courses below calculus, I talk a lot about knowing what the output is, is sometimes kind of like predicting the future. If you know certain chain of events, almost always ends up the same way. You could talk about the outputs, but sometimes you just don't know what the output is going to be because the function is too complicated. But what if we actually knew what the graph is for this? A paraboloid that opens upwards. And I could say, oh, oh, you know these z values, they're zero and bigger, greater than or equal to zero. I could answer this because I knew what the graph looked like somewhat. Not just because I mathematically saw it, but because I already had a picture. Z won't be negative. Now please note that my input is pairs of numbers, but my output is only one number here, in case you missed that above. Uh, there's several ways of writing that. I could write it with the interval notation. We could say 0 to infinity. Ah, there's a bunch of ways we can write this. We could shade it on a number line. There's so many ways to go about this, but I would accept either one of these as an accurate uh, portrayal of the range. Okay, let's look at another one. What was one of the next graphs we saw? Oh uh, yeah. We saw this graph for those that were excited and into that episode. Oops, okay. So So this was z equals 6 minus x minus 2y domain. So ask yourself, is there any algebra that causes undefined values here? Do you ever have to calculate the square root of a negative? Question mark. Is there ever a situation where you're dividing by 0? or taking the log of some value that may or may not be something that you can evaluate uh, perfectly. It can be more complicated than that, but those I would say are sort of the first three domain issues we ever study in algebra. We, we go deeper into roots. We eventually get into some inverse trig functions that have some definite domain and range issues. But let's just look here. Um, I don't see any of those things. I believe that you can use any x and y values you want. There is no x and y value that will cause this algebra to break. But I wonder what kind of outputs there are. Well, once again, I think knowing something about the graph can help. And for this particular problem, the graph was a plane. It happened to hit at these intercepts for x, y, and z. And remember, this triangle is just part of the plane. It 
goes up in the z direction forever and it goes down in the z direction forever my students and my visitors here the range z could be any real number you want it to be it goes in the z direction both ways forever it never stops you could use negative infinity to positive infinity if you love your number lines and this is the z number line you could say oh. if you argue you know the original problem never had the letter z in it you could say f of x y is an element of any real number and just a reminder to you that this does stand for real numbers real numbers all right i'm going to leave it as that was sufficient but these are some other ways of writing it the domain are all pairs of numbers x and y now it's finally going to get interesting and this next example will be our last one for this segment, but stay tuned. There's going to be several more interesting examples to follow in another segment. Okay, there it is, a root. When I talk about the domain, I know that in this domain that the 9 minus the x squared minus the y squared has to be something that is not negative. Greater than or equal to 0 and then I can calculate the root. Now what is this? 9 is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared or x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. You could actually say this is the domain. That is the domain. All of the x and y values such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. So you literally could write this down. Set of x and y such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9 and you would have a domain. But then you'll find out in my classroom, I don't ask that question. I ask people to sketch the domain. I want a picture of the x and y values. What kind of x and y values are we talking about here? Well, if it was equal to 9, I would say it's a circle. X, Y, radius 3, circle. But if it's less than or equal to, it's actually every point on the circle or inside of the circle. These are the X and Y values that you can use. You cannot use x and y values that are outside. The x and y values that work, I want a picture. I want a picture. So the directions, if you were in my classroom, be to sketch the domain. The book that we're using actually says, can you describe the domain? I don't want a storytelling here. I want to show me a picture. Now, if you recall from the previous segment, this was actually a hemisphere graph. It looks like or something like this. Z, X, Y. This circle here on the bottom is that circle. This circle of radius 3 on the bottom, it's that circle. This top view of the XY plane shows me kind of the foundation for the building. This three-dimensional view is going to answer my question about the range. Can you guess what Z values occur 
in the graphing of a hemisphere. What is going on with the z-values? Well, that's right. They're everywhere from 0 to 3. That's a 3. That's a z. This is dangerous for me to write it this way. But that could be a range. You could use interval notation 0 to 3. You could say f is an element of 0 to 3. And again, there's so many ways and notations of writing sets of numbers out. I don't want to get too picky on that right now. I want you to be able to effectively describe it to somebody else first. Now this particular range was doable because we had some sense of the graph in advance. If you stay tuned to what's coming in the next segment, we'll look at range for some problems where maybe we don't always know what the three-dimensional graph looks like. So we shall find out when we get to look at those. See you then.